Hi guys, it's Alex from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the RxPy framework. You'll be able to find the full link to the text version of this tutorial in the description section of the video below. So just to give you a bit of context, RxPy is a library which allows you to write really simple, really fluent reactive systems. And reactive programming is a sort of different paradigm from your more traditional event driven programming. Um, Event-driven programming typically focuses on handling events such as button clicks and is the basic paradigm that's used in most operating systems. So if you're clicking on anything in your desktop, then that would get treated as an action or an event and that would then trigger a callback or an event handler function. So reactive programming, on the other hand, treats data passed into reactive systems as the events. So your reactive system could simply listen for stock price changes and only trigger an action to happen when a stock reaches a certain price. So to get us up and running um, with the RxPy library, we're going to want to define an input stream, which will then subsequently watch and only trigger actions or events to happen when one of these bits of data meet a certain criteria. So we're going to define an array of stocks. So ticker, which is like their APPL for Apple, and the price, which we'll say is 200. We have to get this a few times, and let's do Google, Tesla, Microsoft, and uh, Intel. So we'll say 90. 120, 150, and 70. Cool. And the next thing we're going to want to do is to import the observable class from Rx. So import observable. And finally, we're going to want to define an buy stock events function, which will iterate over our stocks array and call the onNext function whenever the stock price is greater than 100. So def buy stock events observer and for stock in stocks if stock price is greater than 100 observer dot on next stock and we're going to pass in the ticker. Else if stock price is less than or equal to zero, this will be our edge case observer dot on error. And again, we'll pass in the stock and its ticker. And when this is done, we want to call observer dot on completed. So now that we've completed this function, we're going to want to create an observable. So source equals observable dot create by stock events. This observable aptly named source can then be subscribed to and we can effectively react to any of the uh, events that it emits. So source dot subscribe and we're going to define three lambda functions. So on next equals lambda, and it takes in a value and prints received instruction to buy. And we're going to format this with the value. Next, we're going to define on completed. Again, this could be another lambda that's simply going to print out completed all trades. And finally, we're going to print out on error or define on error. Print error occurred with stock. And again, we're going to format that with E. So now that we've done this, we can now run our program RxPy. And as you can see, 
it will then iterate through all of our stocks and when one of these stocks meets the certain criteria, i.e. its stock price is above 100, it will then call our observers on next function. It will emit an event. Now, this was just a really simple example to get you up and running with the RxPy library. We managed to define both an observable and subsequently define an observer, which basically reacts to any of the events emitted by said observable. Now, Whilst this remains a very simple example, it's important to note that you could have an almost infinite variety of different RxPy based programs. You could, for instance, have a Twitter bot scan for tweets based on a certain keyword, and whenever a new tweet appears, it could trigger an event. Or you could expand out this wonderfully complex trading algorithm and create a system that makes you millions and millions of dollars a month. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, then Please feel free to help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing for more Python programming content. Cheers.